The title of the session that I'll be presenting is Why the Five Laws of Learning Still Work. Uh, today, there remains absolute academic laws that must be followed in order to provide or to obtain a quality education. And just in case you didn't know it, the five laws of learning that were foundational at ACE's inception still work today. I'd like to take the opportunity to remind us of these basic laws of learning within the ACE School of Tomorrow program. But before I do, I should point out that what we've learned the past couple years is that very little is permanent. Uh, so many things are changing. But when it comes to ACE, may I just say our philosophy of education hasn't changed. The laws of learning haven't changed. And although the winds of change continue to blow through the cultures of our world, the biblical principles upon which this learning program is based, they haven't changed. Now, perhaps the methodology, that is, how things are accomplished, uh, those change, but the philosophy doesn't change, and it hasn't changed. So, let's talk about the five laws of learning. This educational philosophy behind the five laws of learning can be illustrated by a donkey pulling a cart with a, with a carrot suspended from a stick in front of the donkey. Uh, the donkey wants the carrot, and so he moves forward to get to it, uh, while the driver is controlling the progress, and that's a combination of positive and negative controls and motivation. Uh, this motivation produces the desired progress of the cart. Uh, the basic considerations that need to be given to educational progress are how heavy is the load, how long is the stick, how effective are the controls, uh, how hungry is the donkey, and of course, how big is the carrot. Now, I often wondered what a child would look like in a learning center where the five laws of learning were not being properly implemented. Well, here you go. This is what it looks like. But, uh, so what are the five laws of learning? Uh, law number one is how heavy is the load? Uh, the first of the five laws of learning deals with assigning the proper level of curriculum for each individual student. Uh, we have to place each student on a level of curriculum where he or she can perform well. As we prescribe this unique combination of courses for each child, we are acknowledging the fact that all students are different. Each child is a one-of-a-kind creation with an individual calling which is like no other. Romans 12, verses 5 and 6, So we, being many, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Law number two, how long is the stick? And now once we've prescribed a child's curriculum, we're ready to train the student to set appropriate daily goals. Uh, there's a famous saying that if you aim at nothing, you're gonna hit it every time. Sadly, we see this approach to life and our culture today. Therefore, we must train our students in, in setting reasonable goals to be, to be achieved each day. Uh, goals reflect good judgment and planning for tomorrow. Luke chapter 14, verse 28 says, uh, For which of you sitteth not down first and, and counteth the cost? Right? And so, law number three is how effective are the controls? As a student sets out to achieve his or her daily goals, he or she must now receive motivation through encouragement and support from the staff. Uh, students learn to do right because it is right and because they want to please the Lord. Uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 says, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord. Along with this motivation, students achieve control through, through guidance and, and discipline and, and responsible leadership. It is our responsibility to train our children in biblical character. That is pleasing God in our attitudes as well as our actions. 
Proverbs chapter 22, verse, uh, verse 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go. Law number four, how hungry is the donkey? Uh, throughout each pace, the student's learning must be measured, and this is achieved through the proper use of procedures in the checkups and the self-tests by both the students and the staff. A proper measurement instills in our students accountability. Luke 12, 48. For unto whomsoever much is given of him shall be much required. A law number five. How big is the carrot? The student's learning receives recognition and rewards for both its efforts and its significance. Recognition attributes value to the work and, and spiritual growth that our students are achieving. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, reaching forth unto those things which are before I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now, as we work with our students in the Learning Center, there are many opportunities for us to encourage obedience and a desire to do that which is right. Now, oftentimes, a need for discipline readily comes to your attention, but, but we need to balance that with motivation and encouragement. Throughout the paces, the characters illustrate godly behavior, and they show our students the rewards that come from obeying God and other authorities that's been placed in their lives. Rewards are earned for choosing to do right. This basic character training is an essential part of training children in how to live a God-honoring life. For example, Studying hard and, and working diligently, that's going to help a student pass his tests, and that's going to enable him to advance in his studies. Uh, passing his tests earns him public recognition for his accomplishments, right? Uh, fulfilling the required responsibilities, now that's going to earn him or allow him to earn extra privileges. So I suggest uh, consider providing the use of a special privilege area in this case. And so completing the required paces within a quarter allows him to earn honor roll and perhaps go on a special outing. A completing assigned work may earn the student special field trips or our participation in fun activities. However, I must say, above all else, our main emphasis needs to be on the spiritual growth within our students. ACE provides tremendous resources to assist you in training godly character in, in, in the lives of your students. So, in addition to ACE's 90 character traits of Christ that's been incorporated into the paces, there is a book that you're going to want to utilize. Character Counts, ACE Handbook for Success. Uh, this book incorporates a devotional for each of the character traits uh, along with stories and, and scriptures to illustrate each trait. Uh, this book, it can be used in a daily devotions, a weekly chapel services, and, and for reading stories to your students during story time. Uh, did you know that we've got character trait flashcards? Now, the flashcards have the trait listed on the one side as well as two verses and the trait definition on the other. These can be used in a group or while working one-on-one -on -one with students. Uh, you can incorporate quizzes and challenges. Also, we have character counts pencils that each have a character trait printed on them. And a fairly new product, it's the Character Counts Magnetic Board. And that's primarily used with your younger students. Uh, then there's uh, character trait bookmarks. These are great for prizes or for birthdays. We got character trait borders for your bulletin boards as well. And, and then these uh, character stickers. They're a great option to present students when they complete their creative writing as assignments. Last but not least, uh, in fact, what I'm going to share at this time is what was the springboard for this session. So 
If you weren't listening before, you're going to want to listen now, all right? Uh, may I acquaint you with ACE's brand new Character Counts Merit Certificates. I tell you what, I'm so excited about these merit certificates, and I believe they can become a really helpful tool as you cultivate the character traits of Jesus Christ into the lives of your students. Now, let me say here that uh, many of you have been using merits in your schools for years. Praise the Lord for you and your heart to motivate and reward your students. Many of you have provided a store where your students can submit these well -earned, this well-earned merit money and be rewarded for their efforts. What we found as it relates to a merit store are a couple of things, but primarily I'd like to share with you that we felt like over time, the emphasis tended more towards earning material reward rather than an interest towards building inward character. Ultimately, we felt that the accumulation of merit money to purchase things in a store could influence a child towards materialism. Now, I'm not saying that good behavior shouldn't produce rewards. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, that states to believers, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, and could I insert here godly character traits? If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Now, what I am saying is that while rewards are not unbiblical, we want to be careful not to steer our students towards a materialistic mentality. Let's be careful that we don't um, tie receiving merits with uh, fulfilling the lust of the flesh. Students need to learn to do right because it is right. Uh, earthly goods should not be the motivation. Uh, remind your students that, that honoring the Lord, uh, that should drive their good behavior, which ultimately drives their character. When recognizing students with merits, the emphasis should be on the spiritual aspect of what they have done rather than earning a prize. Students should be admonished, should be admonished to, uh, to produce works that will remain. Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 and 20 says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal, but, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Therefore, it is important that you find a balance in all of this. And, and it is my prayer that, that you'll call upon the Holy Spirit to guide you as you utilize a, a merit certificate and a reward system uh, that will glorify the Lord and all the while instilling the character traits of Christ in the lives of your students. And whether you provide a merit store where students can redeem, redeem their merits or not and and it's completely up to you and how you feel the Lord is leading you. So let me tell you a little about these new merit certificates. They were redesigned by first removing the presence of an appearance of money, as well as the old numerical system. Now, this new merit certificate is truly a character counts certificate of merit. It is essential that when you see a student demonstrating godly character to immediately point out the trait that he exhibited and present a merit certificate. Uh, merits should serve as a tangible representation of eternal rewards. Uh, these new merit certificates remind us of the importance to, to build biblical godly character when we recognize the actions of students who display good character traits, good behavior is reinforced. These merit certificates are available to help you encourage character development in your students. And I encourage you, issue certificates 
throughout the day as you see good behavior. The goal is to reinforce good behavior immediately. What you encourage and make a priority in your students today is what you will see become a part of their character tomorrow. I suggest you have a pad of these merit certificates right here in your pocket. Every time you witness character in action, you can hand them out to students or or even send them home to the parents. Uh, First, you'll want to put the student's name on the back of the merit certificate. Then you're going to want to list the character trait that you saw demonstrated and how it was portrayed. Date it and award it to the student with an explanation of what you witnessed. Let me give you some examples. Let's say you see a student telling the truth even when there could be consequences. You would denote it with uh, integrity or, or honesty. How about when a student volunteers to help a staff member with a project or a chore? You'd write on the back, available or or helpful. What if your student exhibits a good attitude in the midst of a policy change? You could use the character traits, ah, flexible or submissive. An additional idea is to create a spreadsheet to keep track of character traits that are recognized for each of your students. And, And then at the end of the school year, you present a special character awards at the awards program. Let me encourage you to communicate with parents in writing about their child and this merit system. Parents will be pleased when their child is being rewarded for displaying character. Uh, This could also encourage students to exhibit godly character at home as well. While demerits serve to inform a parent about a student's negative behavior, Merits serve as a positive reinforcement, praising character. Merit certificates ultimately reflect Christ's character. It is without question that we as biblical educators must also be a person of character, a living epistle, an open book, the type of person after whom children should pattern their lives. As they see godly character in us, they're going to be more more motivated to to display those characters in their own lives. Uh, Remember, more is caught than taught. As staff, you need to both know and show the character traits. The more we as staff know the character traits, the more likely we will be to live them. Uh, Students will be motivated with a sincere desire to live out the character traits as they see and and hear us talk excitedly and knowledgeably about them. May we all be reminded that the things we do and say will have an eternal impact on the lives of our students. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. May I encourage us all, Pray for your students. Uh, Catch a child doing right. Praise them for for displaying the character of Christ. And then do it all over again. God bless you as you bring them up, as the scripture mandates, in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Mm -hmm.